What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back again with another video. So, I'm gonna check out why WWE in 2017 and 2019 was absolute trash <laughs> during that time. There was a handful of stuff that you could enjoy on WWE television, but most of it was not watchable on a consistent basis. Uh, I know around that time I wasn't even watching Raw and SmackDown on a weekly basis like I would want to. Even though SmackDown at one point did have um, the better show overall in my opinion. And a lot of people's opinion. But the product as a whole was just kind of stale. It was stale. They were pushing people that obviously the fans didn't wasn't trying to get behind it was overly scripted with like the promos and what they had people saying it was it was very cringe uh, a lot of times there was some good stuff like i act like there wasn't some good stuff in this era but the good stuff you had to sit through hours of the bad stuff to get to so we're gonna check this out hey these are dark times but we have made it on the other side y'all and things are much better than what it was back then Let's get right into it, man. I think WWE is going through one of its best ever periods right now. Yeah. I'm actually excited to watch Raw and SmackDown every week. And WrestleMania this year was just fantastic. For the first time in a long time, the storylines are compelling and make sense. Yes. And mostly, the right wrestlers are being pushed. Yes. And we can see that reflected in the ratings and the attendance levels too. It's a good time to be watching WWE. Yes. But it's also very easy to forget when things were bad. And I'd argue that 2017 to 2019 was the worst time in WWE history. I'd argue that it was even worse than the new generation in the mid-90s. <laughs> and that was a notoriously bad time for the company in terms of creativity. Today, I'm going to revisit as many of the moments as I can that made 2017 to 2019 <laughs> in the fucking big dog shit that was awful WWE almost unwatchable look at that bro Rusev debuted in 2014 and had been really popular with the fans but WWE had been misusing him for years by this point and this angle was absolutely rock bottom for the poor guy yeah. Lana was Rusev's real-life wife, and she was scripted to have an affair with yeah. Bobby Lashley. The angle featured weekly segments. It's crazy how they're not married anymore in real life. It's crazy how things happen that way, but yeah. ...of uncomfortable interactions, including Lana and Lashley engaging in over-the-top public displays of affection to taunt Rusev. There was even a mock wedding that ended in chaos, and there were numerous matches where Rusev repeatedly failed to defend his honour. It was yeah. such a waste of a fantastically talented wrestler in Rusev, but... Yeah, bro, this this was just trash, bro. It's like they were trying to do whatever they could to bury this guy as much as possible on screen. That's how they were back, back then. I don't... Obviously, I think things are different, much different now, but... If Vince, upper management, didn't like the fact that you got over on your own or whatever the case may be in, they would do whatever it takes to bury your character. Hell, especially if you don't resign, you plan on leaving, you might as well be just an enhancement talent, bro. Because they're going to bury you into the ground. They're going to make you do stupid stuff, have dumb matches. It's, that's just what it was. That was the culture back then. WWE had a habit of wasting talent during this era how about the storyline where oh. jason jordan was revealed to be kurt angle's biological son yes african-american wrestler jason jordan was supposed to be the illegitimate child of angle who was the raw general manager at the time the storyline saw jordan portrayed as an entitled and whiny little bitch which totally contradicted his previous persona yes. of high level overconfident athlete and as was it's like you keep doing those type of storylines all it takes is a quick google search like those storylines worked back in the day 
when internet wasn't all readily accessible. You can't do those storylines now with social media being what it is. And all you have to do is just go on your phone. And you could have Googled it. It was, it was stupid. This was dumb. Definitely reeks of Vince McMahon. So often the case at the time, after months of nonsense, the whole thing was just totally dropped without a resolution. After Angle had left the company, he gave an interview where he revealed that the whole storyline was a prank directly from Vince McMahon. Like I just said. McMahon had discovered that Angle had dated a couple of black women in his past and this was his way of making fun of him on television. And the women on the roster didn't get away unscathed either from this ridiculous... This is why I'm glad he's fucking gone. Or because the dumb storylines like that. Just stupid. It was a waste of everybody's time. But because Vince wanted it, that's why we saw it, bro. Ridiculous period of time. In 2017, Bailey and Alexa oh. Bliss were in a feud, which led to Bliss unleashing mind games on Bailey. She set up a surprise on Raw to cause Bailey the ultimate level of embarrassment. Bailey, this is your life ended up being one of the most hated segments in WWE history. Bliss played host and proceeded to mock Bailey verbally before introducing various people supposedly from her past, each of which were trying to embarrass her. The crowd turned on this badly acted segment in record time. It wasn't funny, it was badly acted yeah. and Bliss was clearly out of her depth. Nobody benefited from this mess of an angle. Nope. And in fact, Bailey came out of it looking a hundred times worse. Yep. Even the main event was booked terribly during this time. Take the Roman Reigns versus The Undertaker feud from 2017, for example. WWE had been trying to push Reigns as the company's main babyface since 2014, but the fans were having none of it. Nope. They had been rejecting him for years by this point, nobody wanted Roman Reigns as the lead babyface of WWE. Nope. And they certainly weren't thrilled at the idea of him being in the main event of WrestleMania 33, especially since he'd already main evented the two previous WrestleManias uh -huh. in terrible matches. The whole feud revolved... Well, I would say terrible matches. That WrestleMania 31 match with Brock, that was fucking fire. They crowd didn't really care, didn't want, you know, didn't really too much care for Roman, obviously. But that match was still really good. That was, that was a really good match. Involved around whose yard WWE was. Was it the Big Dog's yard or was it the Undertaker's yard? Because he used to call it his yard 20 years ago. <laughs> Trust me, it was a limp and uninspiring build up to that year's WrestleMania main event. But nobody could have predicted how bad the match itself was going to turn yeah. out. By this time, The Undertaker was well and truly past it. And yeah. on this night, he performed worse than ever, yeah. leading this to be one long 23 minute mm. botch fest. It was one of the worst WrestleMania main events uh -huh. in history. It was embarrassing towards The Undertaker and the apathy towards Roman Reigns reached its peak but when WWE unexpectedly pushed Kofi Kingston in 2019, that felt spectacular. It all began at the Elimination Chamber, where Kofi was a replacement for mm -hmm. Mustafa Ali, who was injured. Fans got really behind Kofi, mm -hmm. and he ended up facing Daniel Bryan for the WWE title mm -hmm. at WrestleMania 35. It was a special moment. And this is what I'm saying. There were some great moments in this time, in this period. There was some good shit, as Vince used to say. But then there would be some awful stuff. And you, once again, you have to sift through the garbage to find a diamond. And sometimes people just got tired of sifting through the garbage. The when garbage. Kofi beat Brian to become the new WWE, champion even during this terrible time a new main event superstar had been born 
or so we all thought. Yep. Sure, Kofi was given a good few months with the belt, and he had some decent title defences too, but it was never going to last. On an oh. episode of SmackDown in October 2019, <sighs> Brock Lesnar destroyed him in less than 10 seconds. And so, it was back down the card for Kofi, and he'd never main event ever again. WWE made a habit of these stop-start pushes, uh -huh. and they were happening all the time during this period. These yep. men would go up to the main event and then go back down to the mid-card. And Lesnar squashing Kofi wasn't an isolated incident. Nope. There were loads of times where the legends were booked to beat the younger, more deserving superstars. The Undertaker beat Bray Wyatt at WrestleMania 31. Totally the wrong decision. Bray Wyatt should have won that match. Goldberg squashed Kevin Owens for his title. And Lesnar squashed Samoa Joe. And the favouritism towards Brock Lesnar was sickening to watch too. He won the Universal title in April 2017 and held it for 504 days. And in that time, he only defended it on seven different occasions. <laughs> he was just never on the show. It just felt like he won the belt and disappeared. Yep. Although it must be said that NXT had been a breath of fresh air during this time. NXT was the saving grace. I got into NXT around this time, and I was so glad I did. NXT was what we always wanted on the main roster, and, and, and now is kind of what we're getting on the main roster now. Their takeover takeover events were fantastic. They didn't they weren't over bloated with so many matches, kind of like what it is now. You get about five matches, five good solid matches. People invested. The crowds was always lit at the NXT takeovers. It was something. It was what we wanted on the main roster, but we weren't going to get it. But Triple H was in control at that time. And it was so good. So fucking good. Time. This was Triple H's realm. He was doing the booking. And Vince McMahon kept his nose out and never got involved. And so NXT became sort Ooh. of a safe haven. Yeah. For us proper wrestling fans who wanted to watch wrestling that still made logical sense. And the matches were fantastic too. The only problem was, it was still WWE's developmental territory. And so, most of the wrestlers on NXT eventually got called up to the main yeah. roster. And that should have been a good thing, but it wasn't. Almost all of their favourite superstars on NXT eventually got called up to Raw and SmackDown and into the grubby hands of Vinnie Mac, who clearly didn't like most of them and didn't know what to do with them. It made it really hard to enjoy those wrestlers on NXT, knowing they were probably going to be ruined in yeah. a few months' time. Yeah. There was one NXT graduate that didn't have this problem, however, and that was Baron Corbin. Corbin was called up from NXT in 2016 and he got an immediate push. He mm. won the Andre the Giant Battle Royal right off the bat. Then in 2017, he won the Money in the Bank contract. And in 2019, he became King of the Ring. But he was at his most insufferable in 2018 when he became Raw's very own policeman, yeah. Constable Corbin. Oh my it is God. insane to me that Corbin got the push that he did. They had dozens of better, more charismatic wrestlers on the roster who deserved this spot. He and what's crazy is they put him back in NXT and they started to find something for him that worked and people started to appreciate more of what he was doing in the ring. So it's just one of those type of things where it's like he had been repackaged so many times on the main roster and nothing was sticking, but they were able to make some type of, they were able to utilize him better in NXT. So, you know, it's just one of those type of things where I, I don't think Vince and management really had a clear idea of what they wanted this guy to be and how they wanted to portray him. He was just total crap. He even got placed in a feud with Roman Reigns, Awful. which led to this not-so-classic moment on an episode of SmackDown. 
SmackDown and Raw were almost unwatchable during this period. Yeah. They introduced things like the Wild Card Raw and the 24-7 Championship, which didn't help things at all. But it was mostly the bad booking. We got the same match repeated week after week, uh -huh. and wrestlers would trade wins and losses with each other. So their victories yeah. just stopped meaning anything. Look there was this. a backstage report on the news sites at the time that Vince McMahon was literally forgetting what he'd booked the week yes. before when yes. he was writing that week's script. And those reports really <laughs> implied that Vinnie Mac was losing his mind. And this bad booking extended to the premium live events too. Thanks. WWE made a deal with the Saudi Arabian Sports Authority to bring their show to their shores several times a year over 10 years. And it was a deal that made WWE billions of dollars, but the show still ended up being bankrupt morally and creatively. The greatest Royal Rumble event was marketed oh as being the biggest and uh. best Royal Rumble ever. And it featured 50 superstars and was won by Braun Strowman. But it didn't replace the actual Royal Rumble event that took place in January. And after the show, it was never mentioned again. <laughs> Crown Jewel in 2018 <laughs> featured the so-called World Cup, which aimed to crown the best in the world. The finals came down to The Miz and Dolph Ziggler, but The Miz apparently injured his leg, so Shane McMahon, of all people, replaced him. No explanation was given as to why Shane O'Mac inserted himself here <laughs> over the when someone else says it the way he's saying it, all you can think of is like, this was really on our television, y'all. Shane McMahon was in the best in the world tournament and won. The best wrestler in the world, bro. Oh my God. To someone more deserving. And he ended up winning his match against Ziggler and was crowned the best in the world and the winner of the World Cup. Even by the standards of the time, this was some senseless booking. What we witnessed between 2017 and 2019 was Vince McMahon entering terminal decline as a wrestling promoter. The man that we once called a genius back in the 1990s had finally completely lost the plot. He'd either completely lost his mind or had just stopped caring. Combination of both. This was a great video, man. I'm gonna go ahead and like this video because this video deserves to be. Y'all go ahead and give it a like. Um, link. I'm gonna link the original video down below so that way you guys can go check it out. This was great. This was spot on. He he was spot on. 2017 through 2019 was really a tough time for us wrestling fans, but you know what? We're in greater, we're we're in greener pastures right now. Um, it feels good to be able to say you can watch a Monday Night Raw or a SmackDown in, and it may be not be the best, you know, but it's not going to be as bad as the Monday Night Raws and SmackDown from this period, from 2017 to 2019. It's not going to be as bad as that. And to know that, to know that the PLEs, they used to be called pay-per-views, but the PLEs now, they matter. They People care. The, the shows seem consistent. The shows seem entertaining. The PLEs feel like a big deal. To know that we don't have to worry about pay-per-views being just a waste of everybody's time. We don't have to worry about pay-per-views having seven, eight matches for no reason. We don't have to worry about that no more. It's really, it's really good to think about that. Comment down below. Let me know. How do you guys feel now? Now that we're in this, this renaissance era, whatever you want to call it. How do you guys feel now about the WWE product? Are you guys enjoying what we've been getting uh, since Triple H is taking over? Or do you guys prefer what was happening in 2017 through 2019? Because I'm, I'm sure there's some people that actually enjoyed the shows back then. So, hey, there's no wrong or right answer here. 
you know just that's your personal opinion let me know did you are you got did you guys enjoy the the era of wwe through 2017 through 2019 and also are you guys enjoying what we're doing what wwe's putting on right now let me know down below but i appreciate all love support road to 150 game i'm still young speedy youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all kicking with me see y'all on the next one peace i need my voice back